But uh, human trafficking has been described as uh, modern-day slavery. And that's uh, because its victims are, in some cases, forced to, to work, uh, including as prostitutes, sometimes in sweatshops, uh, against their will. Trafficking victims may not be physically imprisoned, but they are trapped in office, often uh, hellish uh, conditions through physical or mental coercion that makes escape impossible, or at least to seem impossible. It's uh, easy to think of human trafficking as something that happens somewhere else, in countries far away from ours that are suffering through war, maybe poverty. But sadly, human trafficking is a real and a growing problem all over the world, including right here at home. And it can be invisible unless officials and citizens alike are trained to recognize the tell-tell signs. By some measures, human trafficking is the second most significant criminal enterprise in the world, generating an estimate $32 billion in revenue. To me, that's uh, stunning, and maybe to you as well. The statistics for one type of human trafficking prostitution are particularly shocking. I'm told that every year, more than 100,000 children in the United States, in the United States, are forced into prostitution. The average age of entry into prostitution is uh, roughly 13 years of age. In fact, I understand that there have been reports of teenage girls forced to work as prostitutes by gangs and literally branded with tattoos to mark them as property. While the word trafficking sounds like a crime that involves moving people, the truth is that human trafficking doesn't necessarily involve victims smuggled in from other countries or even other states. Human traffickers prey on vulnerable people and our own communities. While some victims are undocumented immigrants, many are teenage runaways or other vulnerable individuals born and raised in the United States. Just last uh, year in Wilmington, Delaware, a man was found guilty of forcing a 15-year-old girl to work for him as a prostitute. And just last month, the FBI conducted a three-day operation in 76 cities that led to the rescue of 105 children who had been trafficked into the commercial sex trade. Two of the children were found in the Philadelphia suburbs from roughly 20, 25 miles from my home. This issue reminds me of a, a passage from the book of Matthew in the Bible. Some of you have heard it. In fact, I guess many of you have heard this. This is the least of these, the references to the least of these. But when uh, Jesus was describing how God looked on those who performed acts of kindness for the disadvantaged by saying, inasmuch as you did it for the least of my brothers, you did it to me. And these vulnerable people are being preyed on by human traffickers are clearly uh, the least of uh, our brothers and sisters. And I believe that we have a moral responsibility to make sure that they are being protected. I am always looking to understand the underlying cause of things nah, so that we are not just focusing on treating symptoms. We're pretty good at treating symptoms. We don't always go at the underlying causes. In the case of human trafficking, I'm hoping that our witnesses today can help us to better understand three key things. First, we need to know what drives human trafficking so that we can be more effective at stopping it. Second, we need to get better at identifying victims so that we can more successfully intervene and remove them from their terrible situations. And third and last, we need to better, better identify potential victims of trafficking so that we can intervene before they're ensnared and offer them effective treatment or service before they fall prey. There are more people in slavery around the world today than at any other point in our history. As many as 27 million people around the world are being held in bondage, forced to work in unsafe, degrading, and inhumane conditions. That's the equivalent to three times the entire population of New Jersey, or 30 times the entire population of Delaware, and an estimated 100,000 of them are right here in the United States. Deprived of their liberty, Subject to unspeakable abuse, the victims of human traffickers cry for help, but too often their cries are unheard. Today in this hearing, we are giving them a voice. We are hearing their pleas for rescue and for freedom. And most important, we are committing ourselves to answering their cries. We must work together to uncover the crime where it exists, prosecute the criminals to the fullest extent of the law, and assist the victims so they're not twice victimized, first by their captors, and then by the system that often treats the victims as criminals themselves. We have seen over the years effective short-term efforts to combat human trafficking in places where it seems to grow overnight and disperse just as quickly. International sporting events, such as the Super Bowl, which is being played in New Jersey this, this February, often attract huge numbers of human traffickers. And in New Jersey, we are seeing a coordinated effort 
to let human traffickers know that they are not welcome and that if they decide to bring their evil trade to our state, they will pay a heavy price. General, and I think seeing what an horrible crime this is of human trafficking uh, in each of our states. Uh, I also want to point out, as Senator Chiesa has, that human trafficking is obviously an international problem and an international crime. And in fact, one of the problems with human trafficking is that it is used to fund terrorism around the world. So today we're going to be talking about domestic human trafficking and it is absolutely horrific what happens to victims of human trafficking and they are treated like things instead of people and that is so wrong. First uh, witness is uh, Ms. Alice Hill, senior counselor to the Se Secretary of Homeland Security and chair of the Blue Campaign, which we'll be hearing about uh, today. Before joining the department in 2009, Ms. Hill served as a Los Angeles uh, Superior Court judge and as a federal judge. Jim Dinkins, Executive Associate Director of Homeland Security, Investigations for U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, also known as ICE. As the director, Ms., uh, Mr. Dinkins has direct oversight of ICE's investigative and enforcement initiatives and operations. Prior to his, assuming his current position, Mr. Dinkins held a number of leadership positions within ICE including special agent in charge for Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Mr. Dinkins began his law enforcement career with the U.S. Customs Service in 1986. Our third uh, witness, <laughs> our final witness is uh, Mr. Joseph Campbell, Deputy Assistant Director for the Criminal Investigation Division at the, at the FBI. He's responsible for national level leadership of complex financial crime, public corruption, civil rights, and criminal investigations. Mr. Campbell has held a variety of leadership positions within the FBI and began his career at the Bureau in 1990. The Department of Homeland Security, DHS, welcomes and appreciates the opportunity to speak with you today. The men and women of DHS are dedicated to combating the heinous crime of human trafficking.